Operation Pluto, which stands for Pipelines Under the Ocean, was a daring and top-secret British engineering plan designed as a collaboration between the British Armed Forces, oil companies, and engineers. It sought to build an undersea network of oil pipelines between England and occupied France in preparation for the Allied invasion of Normandy and the expected subsequent advance into Germany. The World War II mission was originally titled Pipeline Underwater Transportation of Oil and created by Anglo-Iranian oil company chief engineer Arthur Hartley. The project was intended to provide the massive amount of fuel required by the Allies for the liberation of the European continent. Without this vital supply line, there would be little hope of fueling a mechanized advance against Germany's fearsome panzers. The idea was to avoid having to depend on vulnerable oil tankers that risked giving away the Allied invasion's secret landing points. Hidden safely under the sea, the Germans would have no idea what was coming. One of the critical first steps for the Allies to liberate Western Europe from the Germans was to secure a beachhead. On June 6, 1944, the Allied forces would launch the largest historical amphibious landing ever, the likes of which may never be seen again. While technically pulling off such a landing is not the most challenging task, providing the necessary supplies to a beach area is incredibly challenging. Although the Allied effort was successful, much of their success was owed to lessons learned from previous failures. During World War I, British, New Zealander, and Australian forces had failed to advance from the Turkish Gallipoli Peninsula and eventually had to retreat. Valuable lessons were also learned in the months before the Normandy campaign through the landings at Italian Anzio. The American, British, and Canadian troops spent months on the effort without any tangible progress, except for a significant victory on June 5, 1944. The Allies knew that one of the most valuable, necessary, and therefore targeted resources for the attack would be the petroleum needed to fuel their ships, planes, trucks, and tanks. They believed that oil tankers sent to French ports would be extremely vulnerable to attacks by the Luftwaffe. As a solution, they devised to build a secret undersea pipeline with modern technologies. Labeled Operation Pluto, standing for Pipeline Under the Ocean, the project was adopted as the primary strategy to prevent fuel shortages. The oil itself would be sourced from the American petroleum industry. The industry had been undergoing swift and novel developments since the First World War, laying thousands of pipes in all types of terrains. Still, constructing one that could cross the English Channel would require advanced and novel technologies. The channel itself was incredibly deep, the ports far away, and the risks of exposing the project were numerous. Two main methods were selected in secrecy, with only high-level officials and selected workers knowing what the project entailed. The pipeline's main design was developed and laid out by Arthur Hartley, a British civil engineer and chief engineer for the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company. His primary goal was to build an effective pipeline that would pump all the necessary fuel to reduce or eliminate the need for petroleum tankers. The tankers were deemed vulnerable to attacks and weather-related delays. Although they were essential on the Pacific Front and would continue to be vital in other theaters, they were not an ideal method of transportation for bridging the English Channel. To link the Omaha and Gold Beaches, he wanted the pipe to travel 130 kilometers from the Isle of Wight to the Port of Besson Cherbourg. The project was undertaken by consideration of two pipeline types. The flexible HAIS pipe created by the Siemens brothers was developed first with a lead core three inches in diameter. It weighed about 55 long tons for each nautical mile. It received development support from the National Physical Laboratory. Unfortunately, lead was in short supply, and pursuing the design would have required extracting the element from church roofs and bells. Therefore, the British opted to create a steel alternative to lower cost and material constraints. The second steel version was less flexible, but of similar size. It was created by engineers at the Iraq Petroleum Company and at the Burma Oil Company. This new pipe was named Hamel, for the two chief engineers at the head of the project, H.A. Hammock and B.J. Ellis. Through testing, 
It was then decided to place Hamel pipes with ending sections of HAIS pipes. Due to the stiffness of the pipe, they needed to develop a new apparatus, codenamed the Conan drum, to lay it. The initial testing took place at River Medway in May of 1942. Another test using vertical triple ram pumps was used in June across the Firth of Clyde. Due to capacity limitations in Britain, sections of the HAIS pipeline were manufactured across the pond in the US. Pluto was formally introduced into the war plans in June 1942. Trials showed that the internal pressure had to be kept at around seven bars, even throughout manufacturing. British cable ships at the time were not big enough, nor did they have the required gear. Therefore, several merchant ships were converted and fitted with cylindrical steel tanks, hauling equipment, sheaves, and guides. Johnson and Phillips provided the special gear. Full production began on August 14, 1942, with steel from Corby Steelworks. By October 30th, 30 miles of pipeline were loaded on HMS Holdfast. Full-scale rehearsals of the operation went on from December 26th to 30th, when they placed the 30-mile length through the Bristol Channel in bad weather. The testing was considered an absolute success, to the point that the number of pipes was reduced, without having to reduce the volume of petrol. The initial Pluto system needed a pipe that was more of an undersea media cable than a usual oil pipeline. It partially used existing underwater cable technology. Every mile of the pipe contained around 46 tons of lead, steel, and armored wire. The first section covered approximately 70 miles of undersea terrain, from the Isle of Wight to Cherbourg. The unique ships needed to lay the new pipe under the water were sourced and modified cable-laying ships. The civilian passenger ship London was the very first to undergo the required modifications needed to accommodate the huge spool for the new pipe to be coiled around. The Isle of Wight to Cherbourg line was placed on August 14, 1944, with plans for another to follow soon after. Unexpectedly, the first part of the project was disrupted when a destroyer caught the pipeline with its anchor. Another HIIS pipeline and two Hamel pipes were then placed one of the pieces in the network failed before it was operational. At the time, Sir Donald Banks explained the issue, saying, quote, The technique of cable laying has been mastered, but we were not yet sufficiently versed in the practice of connecting the shore ends, nor in effecting repairs to the undersea leaks, which were caused fairly close inshore through these faulty concluding operations. The final version of the HIIS undersea pipe was commissioned on September 18th and ready for use by September 22nd which was around three months too late. The Hamel pipe was ready by September 29th. Both failed on October 3rd due to an increase in the amount of fuel pumped. One of the routes, the one to Cherbourg, had to be canceled. 17 other lines were laid as preparation for the fighting to move on closer to German territory. They were connected to pumping stations across the English coast, housed in inconspicuous, deceptive cottages and garages. Operation Overlord, or the Battle of Normandy, was launched on June 6, 1944, with the Normandy landings. Planning for it had to be innovative because its orchestrators knew it would be monumental. On the first day, 1,200 planes descended on the area before the amphibious assault of around 5,000 ships. That first day, around 160,000 troops went across the English Channel to fight. And by the end of the battle, about two million Allied soldiers were in France. The operation required brand new strategic thinking. The Allies set up the artificial Mulberry Harbors to reach the shores. The Americans set up the Ghost Army to impersonate other units and fool the enemy. The British provided especially modified tanks called Hobart's Funnies, named after their commander, Major General Percy Hobart. The Allies needed to ensure the complex and aggressive operation could go as smoothly as possible by circumventing the majority of natural and man-made obstacles before them. Operation Pluto was supposed to supply the necessary fuel to the beach for the planned advance in the immediate aftermath of D-Day. 
In this regard, the pipeline network failed. Only a tiny fraction of the oil used by the Allies in Normandy for the invasion came from the pipeline project. From the summer to the fall of 1944, it only provided 0.16% of the fuel used. Most of the required oil was in the initial stages of the invasion and was shipped in via the Mulberry ports. The feared threat to Allied oil tankers from the German Navy and Air Force never materialized. Some would later claim that Operation Pluto was amongst the greatest military engineering accomplishments of World War II, save for the fact that it was accomplished three months too late. Nevertheless, by the end of the war, over 150 million gallons of fuel had been transported by Pluto. Other pipelines to France, such as Dumbo, were also laid out using the same technology, although they were far less heralded. Dumbo would eventually become the main artery for delivering fuel to continental Europe. Economist DJ Peyton Smith later analyzed the pipelines and stated, quote, Pluto contributed nothing to Allied supplies at a time that would have been most valuable. Dumbo was more valuable, but at a time when success was of less importance. Following the war, 90% of the pipeline infrastructure was recovered and melted down. However, parts of the system can still be seen today, including many fake buildings built to conceal pumping stations from attack. <laughs> 